we're going to go ahead and call this um, meeting of the Common Council uh, Executive Committee uh, to order. Karen, if you can call the roll. President Furman. Present. Vice President Curry. Here. Alder Bennett. Alder Conklin's excused. Alder Figueroa Cole. Here. Alder Foster's excused. Alder Heck. Here. You have quorum. Excellent. Um, first order of business is um, approval of minutes. Can somebody make a motion? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. second. Awesome. Karen, you, you flip a coin, pick one. Uh, any questions, comments, corrections, suggestions on the minutes? Not seeing any, unless I hear otherwise, I'm going to assume approval by unanimous consent. Um, Moving along, we've got nobody for public comment item. Um, and so disclosures and recusals, does anybody have any disclosures or recusals um, required under the city's ethics code? Not seeing any, we'll move on to the items for consideration. Item number two on our agenda, 76373. Um, uh, essentially uh, amending a Madison ordinance having to do with um, continuous rotation of agencies and bodies listed on the council agenda. Um, this is a technical correction. Um, uh, this is something that's been in our ordinance, but apparently um, either hasn't happened for a long time or has never happened. Um, the Legistar software does not give the clerk's office the ability to rotate the department order on the agenda. And so it's uh, just been ignored. And what, as we were looking at things to clean up, um, uh, staff asked me to clean this up. So um, very simply just removes the continuous rotation and keeps the system in place that everybody is probably used to seeing. Um, are there any questions about this? Go ahead, Vice President Curry. Sorry, I need to admit I was distracted a little bit, so you may have said this and I missed it, but um, would this undo kind of the issue that I had been talking to you about earlier this week of trying to track where certain um, policy is that hasn't yet made its way to council, but has maybe been introduced and making its way through BCCs? No, no. So this is just the agenda itself. Um, where where things are, um, uh, I think the council office has developed a little system on where things are um, because there there is no easy way of tracking when something gets introduced and where it is and when it's coming back. And um, um, fantastic, uh, Liz has done a fantastic job of creating her own system and uh, very often finds that things should have been back on the agenda and aren't and goes ahead, goes ahead and makes sure that they're there. Um, but if you ever have questions, I mean, you can look at the legislative history. So if you're looking up an item, you can see where it was referred. Um, but if you're ever curious about the outstanding stuff or anybody is uh, any older, um, you certainly can reach out to Liz and she can help you with that. Yes, thank you. And thank you, Liz. I know she's not with us, but God bless you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> another question then, this is kind of just like the banner. So like, off report of the clerk's office, report of the alcohol, okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, um, DCR, all those different departments, we're supposed to do some sort of rotation and it doesn't happen. Um, and I, obviously nobody has noticed. <laughs> um, That's it, and, Yeah, and I think, you know, I will say, you know, obviously this was a rule that was also put in place when we took public comment um, with the items. And so I think, you know, the order of the agenda is a little less important um, because we're, we are taking items uh, for public comment um, earlier. Uh, obviously, it's hard to say that when the clerk's office stayed till 11.15 last night to answer some questions, but that's a discussion for another time. Um, can I get a motion? Move to approve. Second. Thank you. Um, and we've, uh, I'm happy to have more discussion if anybody wants to have discussion. Otherwise, I will assume approval by unanimous consent and move on to our next um, agenda item, um, which is also um, very much a technical change. It's agenda item three, seven, uh, legislative file 76377. Um, it's uh, clarifying that allowable action on the day an item is introduced is um, a referral. Um, uh, this is a practice that um, we have done. Um, we, um, but our ordinance does say that we, um, um, are not to act upon an item when it's introduced unless we suspend the rules. Um, and for a weird reason, it did not actually call out referrals. And so um, we're allowed to make referrals. Obviously, we've had discussions about our referrals and this um, very simple technical fix just um, 
uh, aligns our um, ordinance with what our practice has been. Um, Attorney Haas, at any time, if I misstate something, feel free to unmute yourself and correct me. Any questions? Can I get a motion? Move to approve. Can I get a second? Second. Awesome. Um, any discussion? Unless I see otherwise, I will assume approval by unanimous consent and we move on to our next item on our agenda, um, which is agenda item four, legislative file 76379, um, which is um, uh, an exemption uh, request that we have received from, uh, for recording requirements. Um, if you uh, all recall, we recently enacted um, an ordinance change um, uh, last year that requires all committees to record um, their, um, their meetings. Um, if they can't do video recording, um, we, we have information on how they can do audio recording. Um, what we have found since implementing that, that there are certain committees that um, this applied to um, where it just doesn't make sense for those committees to actually have those recordings. Um, and so this, this change um, specifies those committees, but um, you know, the, you know, the, the requirements you know, do not apply to um, staff committees. Um, they don't require, uh, they don't apply to subunits to which the city representatives are appointed, but which are not staffed by city employees. It's very hard for us to have requirements for those, those bodies. Um, subcommittees of any subunit, and then um, some of our um, award committees. Um, there is a request to add another category that I want us to talk about here, um, but are there any questions or thoughts about um, what is being proposed here? Um, you know, I think the thing that was important to me, I know this is something I talked to Alder Figueroa Cole about last year. I mean, you know, it's, it's so important for us to be able to see the deliberations of the committees. And since they're using technology and the technology has gotten easier, um, we, we definitely wanted to make sure our committees are recording. But these committees that are being defined here are not, not reporting back to the council. Um, and it's very hard for us to, you know, uh, ask them to record and, and do something with it. And so I think that's why we're, we have these carve outs, um, uh, you know, to make it a little bit easier. So um, any, any, any discussion questions on this? Uh, Alder Heck. Thank you. Uh, the, the reference to any subunit that is not staffed by a city something or other, um, I guess, um, does that include let's say a subunit that's typically staffed but let's say there isn't possible for a staff member to be there that day things like that um <clears throat> uh, I, I or i i guess i'm wondering if occasionally that could cause a burp it's an interesting question i think uh, the intent of this would be that it would be a committee that's not regular that's not regularly staffed by city staff i mean if for some reason I, I would struggle to see us actually have a meeting that would be staffed. Like we would never have CCEC if Karen wasn't available. Um, you know, I, we, we need, we, you know, we, we essentially need a city staff member. So it would probably be Debbie or Liz or, you know, somebody or, or Larissa in the council office that would help us with that. But, um, you know, I think some of the committees to think about that you may be involved in are some of the downtown committees um, or, or maybe the, um, you know, the Manila, uh, the uh, Manila Terrace. I guess the Monon Terrace Board is probably um, staffed by city staff, but Attorney Oss, do you have other examples that might help me with um, these these committees? Yeah, I mean, and, and if it helps to clarify, we could, um, I hadn't thought of that scenario, but we could say something like for which city staff are not assigned to staff or something like that. Um, but there may, be, I think there are some maybe city county and city UW joint committees that that the city staff does not um, you know host those uh, those committees. Destination Madison will probably be an example. Their board of directors. Do you want? I mean, uh, I, but, I mean, this is the opportunity. If you want, if you want a language tweak, I think you know we we should think about a language tweak. I guess uh, my opinion is it would just to be safe. Uh, you know, it, to say something like regularly staffed or whatever uh just to be safe and in those other committees and make sure those other committees that could function without city staff because even uh because there might be county staff there to do it or i, I don't know so that we don't get ourselves in in trouble 
Attorney Haas will think about something while Alder Paulson shares his thoughts or questions. Thank you, Alder Heck. Alder was, Paulson, go ahead. I was going to say another committee that's kind of in a weird one is the uh, the Muffin, the Madison Unified Fiber Network. That's quasi city ish, uh, but I think the EW actually staffs it. But uh, that for a while showed up in Legistar as a city as a committee we ran. Interesting. I don't think we have heard from IT about um, any concerns about that. Um, is that is that a defined city uh, committee in our ordinances? I don't know. They used to. We used to. Maybe so between like, uh, so Alder Paulson, I, I think the, my suggestion yeah. would be between now and um, the meeting on on Tuesday, um, we can look into that some more if there needs okay. to be a, a more specific carve out for that. But yes, that is a good point, and it's it's not too hard for us to you know do another version at um, council if if necessary. Thank you, uh, Alder Figueroa. Call. So what happens to the committees that record? when there is no outside of zoom like i know some parks meetings when we go in person they have a recording you know handheld recorder thing how does the audio makes it to pop to the public you know karen do you know what the process is i know that took a little bit to develop and we delayed delayed the implementation and get that developed for the audio recording yeah yeah and we and i haven't actually had a chance to experience it yet um so they have recorders they load it up to somewhere on media site um but beyond that i don't know it's not the same as the video these recordings are the ones that are have a clear very you know a path to they get put on legistar they get put on on media site the audio recordings attorney Haas, do you remember if we have them on um request we have them we have them recorded but do we have them posted i can't remember what they decided i i don't believe they're posted anywhere uh, well I, I i actually don't know but i i'm not aware of where they would be posted yeah i mean if they're being put on media site then they're on the city channel website um, i just don't think it's been done but we can certainly follow up all the figure all call and find out more details on that thank you thank you um, we had a re another request that I wanted to talk about with the Common Council Executive Committee. I'm going to share my screen on the language. Um, uh, Attorney House, do you think you um, may want to give a, a brief introduction on this request sure. from um, uh, DCR? Sure. Um, I, I had sent out the, the draft ordinance just to the um, department and division heads just to let them know to share it with their staff that staff that do staff PCCs. And, and the one response I got back was from the uh, civil Department of Civil Rights, and um, they indicated that they had actually talked to me about this in the past. They're concerned that they sometimes have public comments from people where, whether it's uh, an agenda item or people offering public comments on their own, where they're maybe sharing some sensitive information about personal experiences that might deal with Housing. Um, they also mentioned, um, uh, you know, community members feeling threatened um, with deportation, and uh, if they speak to anybody about their housing conditions, um, and dealing with some, uh, 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 I guess the tenants' right or, I think tenant rights, tenant resource center indicated that um, they had some uh, female clients who were uh, feeling threatened about if they spoke out. Um, and so they were concerned about, I mean, th this does happen in public meetings when they give the public comments, but they were um, concerned about having those comments recorded. Um, and so I drafted this language um, as an idea if the council wanted to ex exclude those parts of those meetings from the recording requirement, um, uh, Director Davis and Byron Bishop, who raised the concern, were not available for this meeting. Um, and so they might be able to answer more questions, but that's where this, um, this uh, draft provision came from. 
Thank you for turning us. I'm um, I'm going to reserve sharing my 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 thoughts on this, um, and maybe hopefully uh, have some other people talk first um, uh, and 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 share what they think. Uh, Alder Heck. Thanks. Um, I'm wondering if this is the kind of thing where the those types of public comments would have to be extracted from the recording because you don't necessarily know in advance if such personal experiences would be shared and do we have any precedent for that yeah i don't think there'd be any uh, any thought or ability that the it staff or the media team would have the capacity to go back and edit these meetings i think that that is a you know, a very slippery, um, very complicated, uh, you know, process. So I think, you know, I think the thought would be that the, you know, the person staffing the committee would, you know, at particular times stop the recording and then hopefully remember to start back up the recording when deliberations were happening. Um, but, but that is, you know, that is a technical concern or a logistical concern that certainly um, is, you know, is an issue with, with this, uh, this carve out. Thanks. Any other uh, thoughts or opinions on this? Alder Paulson, go ahead. Speaking of technology, can we do some Zoom magic and somehow kind of anonymize them uh, if they want to testify, especially um, you know, if it's a virtual meeting, can we blur them out? Or is there maybe a setting for Zoom that we could blur them out or just direct their voice or? Maybe there's an add-on or something we could buy for, for Zoom to do that. So we have that as an option. Uh, we can certainly look at that. I don't think anybody here is aware of anything. Yeah, um, I have, you know, um, you know, the side that can certainly be looked at. I'm sure. Um, what we can give that that, that task um, and you know a little bit of research. Alder Heck. One more thought. Um, I can imagine other bcc's that deal with let's say personnel matters could run into this too uh, uh police and fire commission or uh maybe affirmative action committee um where public comment could drift into what is assumed to be a closed session um you know, somebody could make public comment about something coming up on the police and fire commission's closed session for a meeting where this could also potentially occur. I, uh, but that would that would likely be someone. Well, no, that could be an individual's personal experience. It seems uh, there are other possibilities uh, for this kind of a concern. Um, but I have no advice to offer. Thank you, Alder Heck. Uh, Alder Figueroa Cole. I mean, in that regard, again, like when we have people um, that are, that are have requested on the past to have their identity, um, you know, protected for in cases of domestic abuse. So this, this what you're describing here is not isolated to just this committee. But I think that's just a topic that we should be addressing in general, by like having people's addresses on, on you know, available for people to see, like things like that. I think that's a, a different conversation. Don't you think? When it goes yeah. to people's privacy. Yeah, I mean, if, if you want, if you want me to start sharing my opinion, I'm happy to. I'll, I'll do figure I'll call. I mean, I'm no, I mean, I, I just, well, I'm just thinking that what you guys are describing is a privacy issue, but it impacts many other communities, not just these the ones that you guys are talking about. Any committee, technically. Uh, oh. A wise alder last night gave an example and 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 their comments about um, the family definition um, uh, d discussion that we had about how you know people that maybe were violating this law and um, our you know our previous family's definition um, wouldn't come to a council meeting and and want you know uh, want want the fear of being recorded and outed for violating the law. Um, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, I think there are a lot of examples where this, you know, we could we could go into a slippery slope. Um, you know, I think um, my struggle with this is the it's, these are public meetings, um, and so unless we're going into closed session, everything that happens in these meetings, for for better or worse, are considered public. 
Um, you know, I think um, uh, luckily, you know, I certainly don't want anybody to testify in front of any committee, including the council, and be harassed or or have problems because of their testimony. Um, and you know, I, I certainly understand that recording makes that a little bit more complicated or a little bit more likely that more people are going to see it. Um, but I do I do agree that this is probably a much bigger discussion on how to better um, you know protect people um, that are sharing their opinions. Um, I think this for me this. It's hard, but I don't think this carve out is 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 uh, is okay um, at this time. Yeah, I mean, again, so so let, agree. There's many different topics. I think we should we should definitely tackle this separately. We had um, during the people people that were staying at Randall, we had people that were waiting for hours to speak on their phones. There was no place to charge, so people were calling from one phone, and we had to make exceptions for them not to have their names out. So I, I think there. The privacy part can be a whole topic that we should discuss separately. Yeah, thank you, Alder Figueroa called. Any other um, thoughts or, or on this, uh, Vice President Curry? So thank you. Um, touching on the point that these are um, not staffed by city staff um, meetings and that they deal with providing an award um, just based on my experience for my nonprofit um, doing awards they put together a committee there's a transparent process but not everybody is invited in there because obviously depending on different types of awards and focuses maybe sometimes the list of nominees isn't even made public and you just select a, an awardee and so I think while I don't um, think people would naturally be malicious or like with ill intent, um, sharing confidential or private information about why someone is choosing to nominate somebody to receive an award or not, um, to me would be something that I'm, I'd be worried about being recorded, um, especially when we tie in like other city rules and um, quorums and all of that. So I personally think if, it's just for these committees, I'd be fine with those not needing to adhere to the requirement. Seems like more of a burden than a benefit. Um, but I do agree with a lot of the uh, comments that have been shared regarding privacy in general with any of our publicly recorded city meetings. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate you articulating um, a, a good justification for excluding the award committees, which is in here. I will say I was involved in an award committee um, meeting this year, and um, it was it was really hard um, because um, you were <laughs> you were deciding between we, we were deciding between like three really, really good nominees and we had to have you it was a you know public meeting and it was only committee me members there but you had to have like you know honest conversations on like well this person is really good but this person's a little bit better and it's, it just felt you know gross we had to pick somebody um, but you know I, I certainly wouldn't have wanted um, you know the, those those people that didn't get the award to you know hear, hear that um, so um, I, I I think that uh, yeah no, the, the that exclusion is good. I'm not hearing anybody wanting to um, at this time amend this for for the um, the EOC request. Um, and so I, or I think um, you know, unless somebody makes a motion for that, um, the only feedback I've heard um, was, uh, um, and I'll pause my, my thought and let Alder Figueroa call go. I think we should send that back to EOC and have them work with us or whoever on expanding the scope of of the request. Yeah, I mean, I think my suggestion would be to ask them to take it up on their own. Um, I don't want to delay this um, right yep, now. Um, uh, you know, I have, um, which uh, Attorney Haas has let me, I've given the, these com committees the permission to not adhere. Um, I think we've sort of felt like it's been okay to do that. I, I really don't like that idea. I don't like the president, um, you know, making a decision like that. Um, and so I'd like us to codify this as quickly as possible. So I think, um, you know, somebody going back to EOC and saying, please talk about this more and, th and think about it from a bigger scope of, of more than just themselves. Yeah, I mean, I don't say, I'm not saying stop the process. I'm saying we'll move on. And then I don't want it. I don't want the discussion to die. And I think that department or that group has is a good stakeholder to help us get a modification ready for a, at a later time. Yeah, thank you, Alder Figueroa. Call uh, Attorney House. Thanks. So I was just going to add that um, you know I can certainly tell the Civil Rights Department um, 
you know, this this didn't come from EOC. This came from from DCR. EOC, it wasn't referred to EOC. They haven't taken that up. I can certainly let them know if they want to discuss it with the EOC or provide further. If DCR wants to provide further information uh, to this group or the council, they can. Um, you know, there is other committees that it might apply to, like the Disability Commission as well. Um, it maybe it needs a, a broader discussion, but um, uh, I, I can certainly pass along that message. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, Alder Figueroa, call. Did you still want to make another point? No, nope, you're good. Okay, um, uh, Attorney Haas, did you uh, come up with language that may satisfy um, Alder Heck? I, I have two options. Um, the simple one is just to say uh, subunits to which city representatives are appointed but which are not regularly staffed by city employees, or we can say, but for which city staff are not assigned to host or to staff. Those are, I guess, the two options I came up with. All their heck, be a leader, make a decision. <laughs> I, I guess the first one is clearer to me, uh, even though it's a little bit longer. <laughs> Well, the first one's shorter. The first one just says, oh. which are not regularly staffed. Yeah, that I think that, that works for me. Attorney House, do you get paid per word? <laughs> I, I think that is probably understandable that people would you know, un understand it. It, it. it does not apply to just if a staff member is not able to be at the meeting. All right. So, uh, uh, Alder Heck, would you like to make a motion? Yes, I'll move that we amend the proposed language to include what Attorney Haas said. The first one. Yeah. Karen, Karen do you want Attorney Haas <laughs> to repeat that? So I have, um, so you, you want to approve, you're moving to approve with the, with the um, amended language to add not regularly staffed. By yep. and, and then into this existing language, right? I can and Attorney Haas's it. office will go ahead and uh, ups, uh, upload a substitute, which, um, okay. or is it an alternate? Or is it, sorry, um, another discussion. Um, so we've got a motion. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Alder Figueroa Cole, uh, who is doing a great job multitasking. Thank you. Um, any uh, dis further discussion? Not seeing any, I'm going to assume unanimous consent unless I see otherwise. Outstanding. All right, the last, um, the next item on our agenda, our last uh, uh, big, bigger item on our agenda, we've got a few other minor things, um, is uh, agenda item uh, five, legislative file 72111, Alder onboarding and ongoing training. Um, I left this on the agenda in case there was some sort of update that we wanted to talk about as a group. Um, the biggest update I can tell you is that a letter did go out to all of the candidates in the spring election, um, giving them all the dates uh, and information um, similar to what, what is in Legistar. I mean, I think we modified it a little bit and gave a little bit more clarity. Like, so for example, letting um, every uh, all the candidates know. And um, Karen, we should probably also let alders know um, that they are well that you know they they are welcome at that brunch um you know outgoing alders so like you know if alder heck wasn't on ccec he may not know that you know there's a brunch that he he can come to um and he can you know bring bring family or friends or a partner if he wished um so uh but that that gives people kind of the schedule of um uh, uh the most important day which is uh, april 18th but then everything else um all the other um things that we're doing, um, round tables and uh, upcoming training, et cetera. So that letter went out. Um, and then, you know, the council office is continuing to work on um, the training stuff. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll start seeing uh, that stuff go live shortly. Uh, Alder Paulson, go ahead. Um, that actually is useful to let us know because I did not know that I was invited to uh, that brunch. Um, uh, yep. So that's, that's helpful. Um, second, just logistical question for outgoing alders. Um, when does email switch over? I guess I mean uh, this. I'm just asking now. I mean, I will obviously. We'll give we'll give you a wait. better. I mean, we'll give you a better idea of of that. I mean, I think okay. you know you you are officially 
you know, when the new alders are sworn in, technically you're not an alder anymore. Um, right. And technically you're, you may not even be an alder on the 18th, but that's, I don't think I'm going to put Haas on the spot to get into a long discussion about that. But, um, you know, I think, I think, I think we, we will have, there is going to be um, offboarding um, process for outgoing alders. Um, there are going to be specific questions that council staff is going to ask of outgoing alders. Um, there are going to be instructions on, you know, even, even things such as, you know, here's, here's how you should be deleting the email from your phone, um, all your devices. Um, you know, we'll make sure that stuff is in there. Um, and so, you know, we'll, you, you will see some outboarding stuff. And so, we'll, we'll, Karen, we should put that in the note about the 18th and just, you know, tell people, hey, you know, if you are, you know, or if you are leaving, um, there will be, uh, and we probably should send that to any, any alder that's in a competitive race and any alder that, that is not running um, and let them know. Actually, and then I guess I guess the instructions on the brunch need to be sent to all 20 alders. So all of our existing alders need to know that they're they're welcome um, at the brunch. And then um, you know we can include in there that if you're leaving, um, you know because you didn't win your election or because you didn't run, um, there will be off boarding instructions coming. So that, that that could be a pretty simple note that will make sure we get out. Um, and um, uh, that'll be a fun event. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm a uh, not uh, I'm, I'm an introvert, but very much remember the brunch in 2019 and, and enjoyed seeing you know people bring their 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 family and friends and well not a ton of friends but some people brought a friend or two um, uh, and just you know uh, met met department heads and celebrated a, a really exciting day. So um, cool. Any other questions about this topic? All right. Um, then, then it's uh, you know the, our next item would be the council office update. Um, actually, Karen, did we even send that out? Okay, I must have missed that today. I know I saw that last night. Oh, maybe you're right. I PDF'd it and then send it out, and okay. then didn't send it out. So, so it's I'm gonna go it's do really that. short. So if we want to just right you want to just pull it up and talk about it really quickly, I yes. know we're 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 running out of time. I know a bunch of people have another commitment um, very soon, so I'm trying to get people out of here. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. It's very short. Sorry about that, everyone. We had, we had just met last week, so there's not a huge update. But um, go ahead. So yeah, sorry. I um, I'm, my brain is working a little slow today. So uh, yes, hiring update. We have five more days left. Uh, so before the um, position closes. So if you haven't, or if you'd like to push it out some more about um, the position for legislative analyst, please do. Um, we have a couple of fun project updates. We have um, the social media pilot underway. So you can take a look at those pages. I'll send this out as soon as we get done. And then our Common Council official Facebook page is now live as well. So you can um, take a look at that. And then I just reminded folks, there are um, a number of trainings that the city puts on that I think um, would be of interest to alders. Um, I, I highlighted two here about the language line and um, about conflict management. So th that's awesome. all we've got for this Thank update. Thank you, Karen. Alder Heck, go ahead. Thanks, Ken. Uh, maybe you were planning on this, Karen, but I wondered if Larissa could include the council Facebook page in her weekly updates so that we can post those on our blogs. Sure, I'll let her know if yeah, she hasn't Yeah, and already. she should probably, it's a good opportunity to promote the, the Twitter account as well. Um, yeah. Let's Thanks. get more numbers. Thank you, Alder Heck. All right, any other questions about the update? All right, not seeing any, I'll move on to our last item of the, the evening, which is future agenda items. Um, our next coming council executive committee meeting will be our last of the term. Um, uh, uh, Alder Madison has um, uh, two um, county um, related things that she'd like to talk to us about and just get some feedback. I think the logistics more need to be figured out um, at our uh, with the new term, um, but uh, that will be on the agenda. There are some referrals that will be on the agenda, and I think you'll likely see you know one last update on the onboarding stuff. Um, just because we're not meeting doesn't mean that you can't continue to give feedback to um, to leadership and, and council staff on all these items that we have talked about. Um, and uh, uh, you know, look forward to seeing everybody at our next meeting. So I'm happy uh, to uh, Alder Heck, go ahead. Thanks. I wondered if, you know, I'm thinking about our work on BCCs and other things that are kind of lingering because, and we realized we want to suggest to future CCECs that they keep some of those things going. Will we 
maybe have maybe at the next meeting maybe a list of the things that we're going to recommend they keep doing or I don't, I don't know just a thought I mean, you you may have ideas yeah we were actually going to have a whole resolution that um i need to I need to go ahead and write tomorrow um because i completely forgot about that so that will be at our next common council executive meeting um we have a outline for it already and i just need to put some text in there and give um a kind of a handoff of the work that we have done um, related to that exact thing so um, thank you for the reminder, Alder Heck. Um, that is a good topic, and um, we'll make sure that's there. I should have assumed that you were on top of it. No, I actually wasn't. You reminded me, so thank you. Um, <laughs> any other topics people want to see? All right, I will entertain a motion for adjournment, adjournment if somebody would like to make it. So moved. Can I get a second? Okay, second. All right. Unless I see any objection, I'm going to assume that unanimous consent and wish everybody a good evening. Thanks so much. Bye. -bye. Bye.